Welcome back to chapter 9. In this example, we're going to make sure that we're really thinking about the idea of perpendicular distances, and we're going to be applying the same exact uh, problem-solving process to a new situation. So here's our real picture. Real picture. And we know that beyond this real picture, there's two other diagrams that we've been training ourselves to draw because they contain different pieces of information. The first is a free body diagram. So we want to think about all of the forces acting on this ladder. And it's worth noting that we want to actually try to use pounds in this situation because as long as we keep everything in the same set of forces, the units will match each other and be self-consistent. So we have a person who is standing on a ladder, and each of those things, person and ladder, has a different weight. So FG of the ladder is 10 pounds, 10 pounds, and FG of the person is 160 pounds. One thing I really want to make sure to mention, it's a little bit off topic from this particular situation, but it's one that we've been seeing students get really confused about in a way that is a little bit surprising. Pounds is a unit of force. We should not be converting pounds into kilograms at all um, beyond chapter one. Pounds is a unit of force, and so we have a conversion between pounds and our other unit of force. One pound is equal to 4.45 newtons. That has been in the lecture content that is on equation sheets. That is a useful, viable conversion factor in different situations because those are both units of force. The problem with converting pounds to kilograms is Pounds is a unit of force and kilograms is a unit of mass. And as we have now started to much more carefully think about at the end of chapter six, those are not the same idea. The force of gravity on a person, the weight that we think about, that conversion factor you're using between pounds and kilograms isn't coming from our course um, after chapter one. And it isn't useful unless we are on the surface of Earth, which certainly most of our examples are, but I want to make sure we understand that that is not a fundamental unit conversion. So when you see pounds, you should be thinking force in your head. It should not completely stop you in your tracks. You should not um, be looking up the conversion to kilograms when it's not given, but pounds is convertible to newtons, but because we're asking here for pounds, we're going to keep things in that force unit of pounds. All right, so if we think about what else is happening to this ladder, the wall here is applying a force. So the wall is applying a force left on the ladder. So the free body diagram of the ladder. I'm going to write force wall just because although that is a surface, a normal force, there is also the ground pushing up on the ladder. And so that's also a normal force from the ground. So F ground. And then the last thing I want to note here is if this was the only thing we had, then the ladder would slide out, right? No one's holding it in place. If we imagine that this ground were really icy, this person would not be able to stably stand on the ladder. So there is also friction that's acting at the ground. So the force of friction acting at the ground, but pointing to the right to prevent motion in the side-to-side -side direction. All right, so that free body diagram is helping us to make sure we know what forces exist, but we also want a separate torque diagram so that we have a really clear indicator to ourselves of the pieces that are important when we are thinking about the torque equation. So the same process we've been using every time for the torque diagram. We draw the beam or bar or in this case ladder, and it is an angled ladder. We figure out where we're going to put the axis. And if we think about the axis, what we are trying to do is put it at a location that has unknown forces. The force of friction and the ground 
pushing up on the ladder, those are both technically unknown at the moment because we haven't looked at F net equals zero. And so the axis being at the foot of the ladder is a great choice because it means two fewer forces that have to go into our torque diagram picture. When we are drawing in the forces here, I'm going to use color coding for the horizontal forces and the vertical forces. So first of all, when we start here at the bottom of the ladder and work our way up, the first forces we get to is the force of the person and the force of the ladder. So the 10 pounds and the 160 pounds are both acting at the same spot and both straight down. And the wall is acting at the end of the ladder. So force wall, and it's acting sideways. So I've color coded it red. When we are looking for distances, we need to make sure that we have in mind this idea that the forces and distances must be perpendicular to each other. That's the most key idea of what torque really is, is this idea of perpendicular. So with the weight of the person and the weight of the ladder, we need a horizontal side to side distance because we have up and down vertical forces. If they are halfway up the ladder, then instead of six feet horizontally, they are three feet horizontally. You'll notice that I have not put this into meters. If we keep everything self-consistent, we can keep the feet units. And for the, la the ladder hitting the wall, the force of the wall is a side-to-side -side force, and so we are looking for an up and down vertical distance. We have that vertical distance that from the foot of the ladder to the top of the ladder up and down is eight feet. So when we are thinking about this idea of perpendicular, that's really what we mean is that if we have a horizontal force, we need a vertical distance. If we have a vertical force, we need a horizontal distance. And if something is angle, angled, like the previous problem with the angled rope, we need to break that into components and use the appropriate one. The last step of our um, torque diagram process is the directions, clockwise and counterclockwise. So if the wall were suddenly disappeared, then the ladder would fall, and it would fall by rotating, and it would rotate in a clockwise direction. So both of those forces that are acting there are both in the clockwise direction. If suddenly gravity wasn't there but the wall was still pushing, if this was the only force acting, it would rotate the ladder in a counterclockwise direction. So that when we write our torques clockwise equal torques counterclockwise idea, we want to make sure we recognize that there's two separate torques here. They're acting at the same spot, so you are welcome to have the total force, but I do want to point out that they are different. So 10 pounds acting 3 feet perpendicularly, and 160 pounds acting 3 feet perpendicularly. And then for the right side, we have the unknown wall force acting eight feet perpendicularly from the axis. So on the left here, we have 30 foot pounds, so foot dash pounds. The reason they changed direction is because foot pounds is actually a unit that is used here in the US. It's our imperial unit for torque. So 30 foot pounds from the ladder torque and 480 foot pounds from the person on that ladder. So if we saw a similar example where the person wasn't directly in the middle, we would have to recognize that that's two separate terms and that's, that's doable enough for us. So the unknown force of the wall times eight feet, we can divide both sides by eight feet. So this whole entire thing, which is really 510 foot pounds divided by eight feet. We have 63.75, I'm just gonna round that to 64 pounds. And that is the force 
of the wall on the ladder. Now the problem asks us to find all of the forces, so we just have to make sure we're checking on the force diagram now. The net forces in the x direction are equal to zero, so 64 pounds minus friction equals zero. That means that 64 pounds is also the friction force acting on the foot of the ladder. And in the y direction, F net y equals zero, we have that the ground force pushing up minus 10 pounds minus 160 pounds equals zero. And so that tells us that the ground force, the normal force from the ground on the ladder, is 170 pounds. So in almost all situations, there's really only one result you're going to get out of the torque diagram and torque equation, and the remaining unknown forces are going to come from looking at F net X equals zero and F net Y equals zero, just like this example. So in this entire example, what we will notice is that we used a specific set of units, pounds, feet, and foot-pounds, instead of our normal newtons, meters, and newton meters. As long as everything matches and everything is consistent, either of these unit um, sets is reasonable. It's the metric system versus the imperial system. And the only reason that we don't need to specifically turn everything into the metric system is because there is no other part of our equations that is designed to be in the metric system. If we had to use g, for example, the lowercase g of 9.8 meters per second squared, then everything would have to match it by being in the metric system. In this case, because we already had the forces and we already had the distances, we can use that self-consistent set for the torque um, and force calculations. That's it for this one. The last example coming up is the one that has the most complex understanding of this perpendicular idea, but it's one that we can handle and then practice on our own in extra practice sets and in the official problem set. And we'll see you in that last example video.